years. In my previous lecture on nucleosides, I had made you familiar with nuclear bases and the nucleosides. Just to have a quick recap of what we had done in our previous lecture, I had discussed the structure of these building blocks of nucleic acids, that is the structure of nucleobases and the sugars which were deoxyribose and ribose sugar. You know, you are quite familiar now with the fact that a nucleoside consists of a nitrogen base linked by a glycosidic bond to C1 of a ribose or deoxyribose. So what I am trying to tell you here is that a glycosidic bond is formed between C1 prime of a ribose or a deoxyribose and N9 of a purine base or N1 of a pyrimidine base. Hence, we call these linkages as beta glycosidic N9 linkage or beta glycosidic N1 linkage. So, here we will just quickly take an example and show explain what we mean here and quickly recapitulate as to what we have done in the previous lecture. What we have done is here we have a sugar and this sugar is a ribose sugar and what we find that there here is a bond between the beta form of the furanase form of ribose and this is 1 prime and this is the N9 of guanosine and this is what we say this is your bond which is being formed and this is the basic structure of a nucleoside. So now let us see as to what are, nucleo what are nucleotides. So a nucleotide is a single subunit made from three, three different components linked via condensation reactions. Now these components will include a phosphate group, a pentose sugar which can either be a deoxyribose sugar or a ribose sugar that is deoxyribose sugar in DNA or a ribose sugar in RNA and a nitrogenous base which can be adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine or uracil. So when we talk of a nucleotide what we find we have a pentose sugar, we have a nucleobase and in addition to this we have a phosphate group. So as you can see on your screens now this is the simplified structure of a nucleotide. Here we have a sugar which is a pentose sugar and this pentose sugar may be a deoxy sugar, deoxyribose sugar which will be in case of DNA or this can be a ribose sugar as the case may be that of RNA. Then we have a bond between C1 prime and nitrogen of the nucleo base that is if it is a purine the bond will be between C1 and C9 and then of course the phosphate is linked at the C5 carbon 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5th carbon. So what you have to remember is that when we are talking of the basic structure of a nucleotide a base will be linked at C1 of the sugar moiety and a phosphate group will be linked at the C5 dash of the sugar moiety. Now here I have again taken a typical example and what we find here that the sugar is deoxyribose sugar that is the oxygen is missing here. So this hydrogen is just indicated like this that we do not show, we have not shown hydrogen here with the bond. It is assumed, it is known that here we will be having hydrogen. Then we have 
a pyramidine here right and then we here is the phosphate group and it is linked to c1 here and the phosphate group is linked to the c5 here so this is what is the typical structure of a nucleotide so now we know if we have to differentiate between a nucleoside and a nucleotide what you have to remember whether it is a nucleoside or a nucleotide both of them will have a nucleobase that is and both of them will have a sugar and that sugar may be a pentose sugar that is it may be a ribose sugar or it may be a deoxy ribose sugar so that means nucleobase is going to be present in both nucleoside as well as nucleotide a sugar is also going to be present which may be a deoxy ribose sugar or which may be a ribose sugar as the case may be whether it is a dna or rna now the difference arises from here that is in nucleotide we have a phosphate group along with the nitrogenous base and a pentose sugar so that means if you look into your screens what i have shown you here that is if we have a base here this is your purine molecule which is linked to the sugar here right and it is linked to c1 so if we have a sugar molecule and a nucleobase attached to it at c1 then this is a nucleoside so and when does it become a nucleotide when a phosphate group is attached at the c5 carbon it becomes a nucleotide so what is a nucleotide nucleotide is nothing but a nucleoside plus a phosphate group so this is what you have to remember you we sometimes get confused between what is a nucleoside and what is a nucleotide what you have to i feel that we can remember it we have to remember if it is side that means molecule is present that the compound has only sugar and base in it side means sugar whereas when we are talking of a nucleotide that means now the sugar is tied to something else and the group to which it is tied is the phosphate group so this is the difference between the nucleoside and the nucleotide so now we can say that nucleotides are phosphoric acid esters of nucleosides these occur either in the free form or as a subunit in nucleic acids in free form they exist as atp that is adenosine triphosphate and there are many other molecules in which they occur in free states whereas they occur as subunits in <coughs> dna and rna and the next point that you have to remember is that it is the phosphate group which is always sterified to the sugar moiety so now what we can say as i have said before i am repeating it again so nucleotides are nucleoside phosphates we can say this that is what is a nucleotide nucleotide is a nucleoside phosphate because what we have done we have added phosphate group to the sugar at the fifth carbon in case of a nucleoside so in other words it is the phosphate group which makes a nucleoside a nucleotide so we say that phosphate groups are essential for nucleotide polymerization so when we talk of a ribose moiety now we have to remember that in ribose moiety of a ribonucleotide this phosphorylation reaction is possible only at three positions that is c prime c2 prime c3 prime and c5 prime since c1 and c4 prime are involved in furanase formation let me explain this with an help of an example or with the help of a structure so see 
if you remember our last lecture when we were discussing nucleoside there i told you that the open chain structure of the ribose is converted into the closed structure due to the formation of cyclic hemiacetal and when this takes place then a bond formation takes place between the c1 of the open chain structure that is the aldehyde group of the ribose and the oh on the fourth carbon resulting in this hemiacetal structure right so that means the oh on the fourth carbon here is involved in bond formation and what we so this is not available similarly this is also not available the this group is also not available here now this oh if you remember will go into bond formation with the base by condensation reaction that is this oh will be removed from here and hydrogen will be removed from the base which may be purine or a pyrimidine so that means these three ohs are not available so what is now available is this oh which is at the 2 prime oh which is at the 3 prime or the oh which is at the 5 prime 5 prime carbon which can take place in phosphorylation reaction that is which can take part in the ester formation that is phosphoric ester formation that is oh will be removed from the phosphoric acid hydrogen will be removed from here and we will get a phosphoric ester linkage here phosphoester linkage here so this is what happens if the case is ribose but on the contrary if the molecule is deoxyribose so what we know that in deoxyribose of we have only two positions which are available for phosphorylation which are c3 as c3 prime and c5 prime now you know already that c1 prime and co4 prime are involved in furanase formation of the ring and we know now since this is a deoxyribose sugar that is at c2 prime it will not have a hydroxyl group so as i've explained for case of ribose that c1 and c4 are involved in formation of the furanase form so these are not available whereas when we talk of this molecule and then when we look at this position what we find at this position the oxygen is not present here that is a hydroxyl group is not present here it is only hydrogen here so again this will not be able to undergo reaction with phosphoric acid that is phosphorylation will not take place here ester bond cannot be formed here so in this case ester bond formation that is phosphorylation can take place only at two positions that is c3 prime and c5 prime so let us now look into a typical structure of a nucleotide so when we look into a typical structure of a nucleotide what we find here this is your sugar and this sugar here is a deoxy sugar because we do not have a oh group here and then there is this bond between the c1 prime that is here the B, the configuration of this oh is beta so we call it as beta glycosidic linkage and the bond is between carbon and nitrogen therefore it is known as n beta glycosidic linkage this is same as that was present in the nucleoside so this is not different from a nucleoside where does this nucleotide differ from nucleoside it differs here that here we have a phosphate group and what happens here is a ester bond is formed between the phosphoric acid and the oh of the sugar so this is what happens in this case now since the sugar is deoxyribose sugar phosphorylation could take place here 
of phosphorylation can take place here. It cannot take place here. If it was a ribose sugar, then phosphorylation would have taken place at this place also. Now, let us go on to discuss the nomenclature of nucleosides and nucleotides. I hope it is very clear to you now that the nucleoside is a compound made up of a sugar, pentose sugar which may be a ribose or a deoxyribose and the along with the base which can be a purine and a or a pyrimidine base. Whereas in nucleotides are phosphate esters of nucleosides. That is when we add a phosphate group to a C5 of a nucleoside, we get a nucleotide. That is nucleotide minus phosphate is nucleoside, whereas nucleoside plus a phosphate is a nucleotide. So, what does a nucleoside contains? It contains a nitrogenous base and a pentose sugar, whereas a nucleo, sorry, nucleoside and not nucleotide, nucleoside contains a nitrogenous base and a pentose sugar, whereas a nucleotide contains a nitrogenous base, a pentose sugar and a phosphate group. Now, I have already discussed with you in my previous lecture the naming of nucleosides. So, let us now quickly take two examples just to recapitulate as to what we have done before as to when we are naming a nucleoside and that nucleoside is supposing of ribose and the base present there is adenine. So, we are taking an example of a ribonucleoside when we are and the base that we are considering here is adenine. So, if the base is adenine, sugar is ribose, the name of the nucleoside that is the IUPAC name of the, the systematic name of the nucleoside will become adenine ribonucleoside. That is we are specifying here that the base present is adenine and the nucleoside is that of ribose sugar. Whereas, when we refer to a common name, we simply name it as adenosine. And when we are naming it as adenosine, it is very clear that it is a nucleoside of ribose sugar. And this is now abbreviated as AR. That is, the base here is adenine and the sugar here is ribose. Whereas, if we take again, a d example of a deoxyribonucleoside, then taking again adenine as a base. So, the name will become and the sugar is 2 prime deoxyribose, we will name the nucleoside as adenine deoxyribonucleoside. The common name will become deoxyadenosine. Here we have eliminated ribose. So, it is deoxyadenosine. The abbreviation will become A small d r. What do we mean here is here the D is indicating that this is deoxyribose sugar and the base here is adenine. So, this is how we will name the nucleosides. Now, if we go on to, now let us take a simple example here uh, with the help of a diagram that is sugar here is maybe ribose. If the group here is OH, the sugar will be ribose. If it is H, it will be deoxyribose. Now, here it is adenine. So, here I am referring to the common names. So, if it is adenine here, the nucleoside, the common name of nucleoside if the sugar is ribose will be adenosine and please remember the abbreviation will be AR and if the sugar here is deoxyribose sugar the name will become deoxyadenosine and the abbreviation will be A, D, small d and R. Now, let us go on to discussing a nucleotide. You know a nucleotide is a nucleoside 
that forms of phosphate ester with the C prime that is OH on the C prime of the ribose or deoxyribose. So now how are we going to name these nucleotides? So now since nucleotides are phosphate esters of nucleosides, we will simply add the word 5 dash monophosphate because we are adding the group phosphate at the 5 prime number we will and we are adding just one more phosphate group we will name it as supposing adenosine 5 dash 5 uh, 5 dash monophosphate so nucleotides we can say that nucleotides are named using the name of the nucleoside followed by 5 dash 5 monophosphate so here i have taken a nucleotide of adenosine so when we do that we are naming it as if the sugar here is again ribose sugar you will name it as adenosine 5 prime monophosphate that is amp if it is deoxyribose sugar that is instead of oh we have an h we will name it as deoxyadenosine 5 prime monophosphate and again when we are writing d here small d it is indicating that the sugar present here is deoxyribose sugar so this is how we are going to name the nucleotides so let us look into the iupac names or the systematic names of the nucleosides and nucleotides so if the base is adenine and we are referring to rna that means the sugar here is going always going to be ribose sugar in RNA and the base here is adenine so the nucleoside will be adenosine and the abbreviation will be A and the nucleotide as I said before it is a phosphate ester and the phosphate group is present at the 5 prime position and only one phosphate is present so this will become adenosine 5 prime monophosphate that is AMP if we have guanine then it will become guanosine the nucleoside will be guanosine and gu the nucleotide will be guanosine 5 prime monophosphate that is gmp similarly for cytosine it will become cytidine and here the name will become cytidine 5 prime monophosphate that is cmp for uracil it will become uridine and here we will have uridine 5 prime monophosphate and it will be the abbreviation will be ump now if the sugar is deoxyribose sugar that is these are present in dna these are the nucleosides and nucleotides of dna then in this case adenine will become if the base is adenine it will become deoxyadenosine and there it will be da which I think we have missed here it will become DA and the name of the sugar here would be deoxyad5 deoxyadenosine 5 prime monophosphate that is DAMP similarly for guanine it will become deoxyguanosine symbol will be DG not G DG because here the sugar is deoxy and deoxyguanosine 5 prime monophosphate that is DGMP if it is cytos cytosine it will become deoxycytidine the symbol will be DC the name of the nucleotide will be deoxycytidine 5 prime monophosphate that is DCMP Similarly, for thymine, it will become deoxythymidine, that is T, and the DT and the nucleotide would be deoxythymidine 5 prime monophosphate, that is DTMP. So, what you have to remember is that since we are only adding phosphate group to a nucleoside, when we are giving systematic names to nucleotides, we will simply add 5 prime monophosphate to the name of the nucleoside 
So, if the nucleoside is deoxyadenosine, the name of the nucleotide will become deoxyadenosine 5' monophosphate that is DAMP. Now, if we refer to the generic names that is the common names of nucleotides, these are the names which are most popular in usage that is we like to use the simple names not the IUPAC names that they are very complicated. So, now if we are writing so we will prefer to write it in a sim simple manner. So, that means nucleotides which are nucleoside phosphates will be simply named by adding ilate to the nitrogenous base. So, if the base present in a nucleotide is adenine, the nucleoside will be adenosine and the nucleotide will be adenylate. Similarly, if the base is cytosine and the sugar present is a deoxy sugar, deoxyribose, we will refer to the nucleoside as deoxycytidine and the name will become the sim the nucleotide would be deoxycytidase that deoxycytidylate that would be the name so you should remember that nucleotide and nucleosides are the general names they include both deoxyribose as well as the ribose forms so, we can also designate them simply as nucleosides and nucleotides. For example, riboadenosine can be addressed as adenosine and deoxyribonucleosides can be referred to as simply as deoxynucleosides that is new let me repeat this deoxyribonucleosides can be simply written as deoxynucleosides and deoxyribonucleotides can be simply written as deoxynucleotides so deoxyribonucleoside can be called as deoxyadenosine so if i summarize the whole lecture today so what can we see we can see that a nucleotide is a nucleoside that forms a phosphate ester with the C5 prime OH group of those of ribose or deoxyribose. And nucleotides are named using the name of the nucleoside followed by 5 monophosphate. So, if I look let us quickly revise this example again that is here when we are writing the name of the nucleotide we will the name of the nucleoside would be adenosine we will name it as adenosine 5 dash monophosphate that is AMP and if the sugar is deoxyribose sugar we will simply name it as deoxyadenosine 5 monophosphate that is DAMP. So, for this lecture again, I had referred to the books by Robert et al. that is concept of genetics, Nelson et al., Pierce et al., Klug et al., Barrett et al. Now, in my next lecture, I will be taking up few more examples of nomenclature of nucleosides and nucleotides and then we will go on to discuss some other nucleotides which are not pre or nucleosides which are not present in DNA and RNA that is that are present in free, free form like ATP, NADP, HNADP and so on. Thank you.